Hi y'all, Professor Bo here and we're going to give you a lesson called Very Basic Adobe Premiere Editing. This would be like lesson one if you were starting to learn Premiere. So here we go. I want to start at the Adobe website because I want to show you the computer system requirements to run Premiere. So we're at the Adobe website. There's the URL, adobe.com. And we are going to go under Help and Support. And then over here, we're going to go under Help Center. And then from here, we want to find our reference to Adobe Premiere Pro in the Help Center. So I'm typing Premiere Pro. And I hit Return or Enter. And then hopefully, you can find Adobe Premiere Pro Learn and Support. So we click on that. Now there's a more direct way to get you to the minimum computer requirements, but I wanted to show you this way so you can see the user guide. Let's click on user guide. This gets us into our user manual, which can answer a lot of other questions about Premiere Pro. Let's look at the sidebar. So here's our system requirements right under hardware recommendations. So click on system requirements. And under there, you are going to see what you need to run Premiere Pro on Windows. And if you scroll further down, down Mac OS and other systems that are mentioned on this page. So it's right up there on the website. And um, have a look at it to confirm that your system will be able to run Premiere Pro without any problems. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the sidebar capturing and importing section and let's look at our supported file formats this could be very useful to see if your video sources will be compatible with Premiere lots of different types so that's some help from the website and now let's look at this the footage provided for this exercise is material I downloaded from Adobe music video source files. I'm going to go inside that folder and we're going to see that we're going to have video footage, a bunch of files, video clips. We're going to have some audio. This is some music and inside graphics there's three Photoshop files. So let's run Premiere. I'm running it from my dock here. When I first started this instructional video I was running Premiere 2019, but now I have updated the lesson to the latest version. Also at this stage, Premiere may warn you about something, depending on your system. You'd use your best intuition on how to proceed on any of those alerts. Uh, and then you would make a choice and continue on. Whatever you choose probably will not interfere with the lesson I'm providing you today. And then we'll be here, which is the Premiere introduction screen. Notice you could run a tutorial here to get you started with Premiere, but if you do that, you're not paying attention to my lesson. Mm -hmm. But for what we need for this basic lesson, let's click on New Project. And we're going to get this imposing looking window. Now what you see here, this is sample footage that Adobe provides for you to experiment with. We're not using these clips for this lesson. These sidebar links can take you to other places on your hard drive where you can do things like import footage, but we're going to import our footage a little later. First, we're going to create the project we're going to save to. Up here where it says project name, let's name our project something like hoverboard project. This will be our music video. And the reason I use the word hoverboard is because there's hoverboard footage in it. You'll see. Over here where it says project location is where we would save your project. Premiere saves your project in a default place on both Mac and Windows. It's in the documents folder inside an Adobe folder. Um, when you were to open Premiere next time, your project will come up in a list. Personally, I like to click on this project location link and choose the location that I save it to. You have the option of creating a new folder. And then after selecting the destination that you want to save your project to, we hit the choose button in the lower right. It hasn't saved it yet. 
So far you've only chosen where you're going to save the file. The next step is to hit the Create Project button down in the lower right of the Premiere interface. Then it'll save. This is the older interface of Premiere. And it has everything that we just used to create a project in the newer version of Premiere. Um, all of the functions just look different. The newer version looks less cluttered. But if you have the old version, all you really need are the same things we did with the newer version, which is give your project a name, decide where you want to save it, and then click OK in this case, where we clicked Create earlier. All of this complicated looking stuff can be left in their default positions for now, if you're using the older version, of course. If this is the first time you've run Premiere, you may be in the so-called learning workspace. If you're in the learning workspace, you'll see on the left additional Premiere tutorials that you can run if you're hooked up to the internet. But if you watch them now, then you're interrupting my lesson and I'll be mad at that. No, just kidding. These tutorials won't show you how to do our lesson step by step, but of course they're still useful for learning. I need to tell you about workspaces. In the older versions, the workspaces are up here. In the newest versions of Premiere, the workspaces are located along the upper right under this icon. So when I instruct you to change a workspace, you'll be using this pull-down menu rather than the old across-the-top links, unless you are using the older version, of course. Here's what I'm talking about with the older links. Let's go to the assembly workspace, which is a very basic workspace. So select the assembly workspace, whether you're using the new version with the pull down menu or the old version with the links across the top. We get a big window over here and up here we see our project tab, which lists the name of our project. In this case, the hoverboard project. You can select these other tabs for different things, but for right now, let's stick to our project tab. We'll talk about these other tabs when we need to go into them. One important thing about these panels is that when I click on one panel or the other, do you notice how this blue outline surrounds the panel that I click? That's selecting that particular window or panel. And that's very important uh, to understand. Um, when you have a particular panel selected and you attempt to do a function, and what you expect doesn't happen, it might very well be because you have the wrong panel selected. In the project panel, there's this little thing that says import media to start, and you can double click on that to import our media. Or with the new or old version of Premiere, you can go up to the file menu and say file, import, and that will open a window where you can find the source files you want to import for this project. A student and I have discovered a gotcha with this new version of Premiere. There are these links up here, which should take you to different portions of the program. And we've discovered that it is incredibly buggy. Do not use the import link here. Use the method I just told you about, one of which is going under the file menu and importing from under the file menu. If you click on the import link, which I don't recommend you doing, it, among other things, grays out the file menu import menu. So it's buggy. Let's see if they fix it. Now the files provided for this lesson are in the folder music video source files. I downloaded this from Adobe. These are high definition video files. I've shown you these before. Um, there's one audio uh, file that's music and then there's three Photoshop files. What we want to do here when we're importing we can click on the top folder and then hold down the shift key and click once on the bottom folder and when I import those three items they will come in as bins and I'll define what a bin is in a little bit. Now um, this little window is asking, Premiere is asking us how to handle the layers in the Photoshop files. And um, you see that if I click on the menu, there are other choices. But for us today, let's just click OK to merge all layers 
for each one. There's three of these files. And then here's our files coming in. And here's what it looks like. These are our three bins. They were folders. Now we're going to call them bins. A film bin is a canister that holds film clips and it's an organizing tool. Here's a picture of one. Now your um, icons for these bins may look like this. And that is because down here in the bottom left, this is the list view. This is the icon view. When, when in the icon view, which is I think the default, it'll look like this. When in the list view, it'll look like this. Let's start in icon view for right now. Click on the little button if you need to get you into icon view. Um, they're all highlighted right now. If I click outside of them, that will unselect them. And I want to look at the video footage. So if I double click on the bin called video, by the way, the bins are operating as folders in Premiere, but we'll call them bins from now on. So double click on it. And here is the footage. Um, oh, it opens as a separate window. That's a little inconvenient. What we can do is grab this window at its name here and drag it up so that you see the blue highlighting. Actually, I can put it right up on the menu like that. And then it shows up as one of these tabs. And this can be moved around like that. So here's our original project panel tab. And here's our video footage tab. And you see that this one is inside the bin called video footage. Also, if I want to get back, if I'm in this tab and I want to get back out outside of the bin, uh, this little button is useful. This will take me back up outside of the bin and see it takes me right to that tab where the original bin is. By the way, while we're here, I did want to say something else about these tabs. Uh, they can be a little tricky and people can get lost um, until they understand them. The media browser, this is where you can find files by going inside your computer like this and finding things inside. Uh, for instance, here's my movies folder and so on. This is very similar to the Apple Finder, but it's inside Premiere. And sometimes you mix this up with the project panel uh, tab and Try to get, try to keep those straight. They are not the same thing. Also, um, sometimes the project panel can be hard to find. If I squeeze this down like this and make that harder to find, like for instance, I don't know, maybe I'm in the media browser like this or I'm somewhere else and I don't even see the project panel at all. Well, here's our useful button to click to get this sidebar kind of thing and it'll immediately take us back to whichever we choose here, but mostly we want to find the project panel tab. And if the interface ends up getting so out of whack that you can't find what you could find earlier, um, okay, notice we're still in the assembly workspace. We can always go under the window menu, go to workspace, here's our assembly workspace, and we can reset it to the saved layout if you're in any other workspace, editing is used a lot, for instance. Uh, you can reset any of these workspaces to their s saved layout and boom, it takes you back to what it looked like originally. That can help you find things if you get lost. But let's click on the video footage bin tab that we've opened and notice that each clip appears as a thumbnail image. That's one frame from the clip because these are all movie clips. And also the names of the clips are along the bottom. If I take my mouse and I'm not clicking, I'm just dragging without clicking or holding down the mouse button. I can see what's in any of these clips just by dragging through them this way. If you want to find something really quickly, that's very useful. Before we go on, I need to show you something very important. I saved the project as the hoverboard project uh, in a particular place on my hard drive. And I want to show that to you right now. I'm going to say hide Premiere Pro. Here's my hoverboard project actually right here. 
And if I click on it once to select it, and then go up to the menu, File menu, and say Get Info, we will see that the hoverboard project dot PRPROJ, the extension for a Premiere project, notice that it's only 75 kilobytes large. Now that's small, very small. If we look at the footage, here's our video footage, and I say get info to that. This is 832.4 megabytes. Now that shows you that the footage is not residing inside the project. When we go back over to Premiere, these icons are pointing to the footage that is outside the Premiere Pro project. And that's why you need to keep the footage on your hard drive. If you delete the footage, it won't be inside Premiere, and the next time you run Premiere, this will all load up with a big red horrible warning screen which says that your files, your, your, your footage is offline. Bad scene. So make sure you understand that concept. The project file points to the footage. The footage is not inside the project file. Another thing I want to show you is that whenever you make a change in Premiere, this little asterisk will show up, and that's a reminder to save your project. This newer version of Premiere has replaced the word edited for the asterisk. So when I save, the word edited goes away, as does the asterisk in the old version. You should save it often. It's a good habit to get into. Under the file menu, here's save. There's your keyboard shortcut. When you save it, the asterisk disappears and you know everything's up to date. Um, there is a autosave in Premiere. Um, if I hide Premiere and we have a look at where I'm storing things, you'll see that Premiere has created this autosave folder and so it's been saving my projects every so often for me and that's very helpful in case something crashes. You can go back to these autosave files and they're listed by date and time. So you can try to recover some work if your computer crashed. If you want to play through any of these clips, I'll just double click on the first clip here. It'll load up into our source panel and I should be able to click on the play button. Now these clips are special clips for this. They are silent. Normally you would hear the sound if your clip has sound that was recorded with your camera. I could double click on any of these and have a look at the clips. So in the source panel we've got the play button and when we put it in play the, the square is the stop button. Notice what's called the blue playhead right here. You can grab that and drag that back and forth if you want in addition to playing and stopping. Also while we're close up here our clip loaded up in the source tab uh, the program tab here, that's going to be for the timeline when we start editing. So notice the difference. Now we can start editing. Finally, Finally we're editing. editing. And what I want you to do is to create a music video out of all of these clips. If we look down here in the timeline we can see drop media here to create sequence. And that sounds like a good idea. Let's drag through these clips with the mouse to highlight them all, and then grab any of them, click and hold, drag them down here to the timeline, notice the little plus that the hand gets, and when I drop them in by letting go, the clips have gone into the timeline, and they are in the order uh, that the clips were up here. So notice something, uh, first off, we're now in the program tab rather than the source tab. The source tab was showing us these clips. The program tab is going to show us what's in the timeline. And if I click on the play button, here's our clips. And when it gets to the next clip, it will cut from one the end of one clip to the beginning of the next. And so on. We're not going to watch this whole thing, but this is the start of our music video. I'm going to hit the stop button. A convenient way to, to play and to stop is with the spacebar. I hit the spacebar and it stops. 
Now these are silent clips. As I said, normally your footage would be shot with sound. In order to save some space, Adobe made these clips so that they're silent. If we take a closer look down here in the timeline, here's our video track one, video one. This is the video up here. And down below, this is A1 for audio. And if there was sound in the audio, you'd see little waveforms, sound waveforms down in here. Here's another thing to notice before we go on. The, uh, the timeline has taken on the name DG underscore hoverboard underscore 005. Now that is because it named it after one of these clips. Once you put clips in the timeline, it creates a sequence and puts the sequence as an item up here. Notice that here's the hoverboard 005.mxf original clip. And this is the timeline or the sequence that was named after that clip. The only way you can tell them apart right now is by the icons in the lower right corners. This is a footage clip, so there's footage and it, it's silent, but that would be the sound. And notice that that is a different looking icon than this, which looks like a playhead in the middle of some tracks. This is our sequence, which is in the timeline. If I click on this name, I can change the name to something like hoverboard sequence and I'm just calling it sequence because that's what it is so you get used to it. I'll hit the enter key and then in our timeline here the sequence now has a new name both on this icon and in the timeline itself. I can also duplicate this sequence such that with it selected, I can go up to the edit menu and say duplicate. And so this is now a hoverboard sequence copy. And when I double click on it, look at how the hoverboard sequence copy 01 has loaded into the timeline. And just like other places in Premiere, you have these different tabs. And I could go to the copy. I could rename the copy. I don't want to right now. You could do that. I could take large swatches of my footage and delete them. And over here under the original hoverboard sequence, they're not deleted. So you could be creating more than one sequence and they can diverge. You could have different choices for your producer or whoever this may be, you might be making this for. So I'm going to go back to our hoverboard sequence. Let's have a listen to our music. I'm going to go back to the project tab. And here is our audio. If I double click on this bin, this is a sound file. If I double click on the sound file, it loads up under the source tab. And I could put it in play. And there's my music. Now we want to take this music and put it down here in the timeline. The thing about music is when you try to grab it in the waveform area here, see it thinks you want to, it thinks you want to skim through it to preview it. Uh, and what we need to do is rather than grabbing it in that picture, we need to grab this little thing that looks like a waveform. When I take my mouse and hover over it, it turns into the little hand. And that allows us to grab the audio only. If there was video on this, it would only take the audio. But we have to do this for a sound file. And I'm going to, let's drag this down here and put it into audio two. That is the A2 track. And then it's inside of our timeline. If we click on our program tab up here so we can see the timeline and put this into play. That's the beginning of our music video. Notice that the music only lasts that long and you have this many clips. So your assignment is to edit these clips so that you'll have a music video starting from the beginning to the end with no extra clips. We can start this by, I can select all of these clips. 
I can drag them out this way and then um, I'll click in this empty area to deselect them and when I drag the mouse through them with the playhead you can see what clips are what so let's say that I come across these clips that where people are watching let's say I select that one I can click and hold and drag it we will make that the first one now let's let the music fade in to a with a blank screen before we get to that one I'm gonna go and look for another one with people watching on their phones or recording it with their phones or whatever here's another one so um, again I'll click and hold and you gotta get this in the middle because if you're if you're on the sides it thinks you want to trim this clip and that's not what we're doing you need to be in the middle so that you can grab this clip and drag it over and notice how it snaps right to the end of that one when I get close to it let's find another one Okay, this guy and lastly these folks now um, when we're looking at these these are so small we need to actually expand the timeline so we can get in here closer and that's done on the bottom here this item that slides back and forth if I click it in the middle in the bottom of the timeline I can slide back and forth in my timeline if I click and hold um, the uh, circle on it this will actually zoom into the timeline where it'll magnify the timeline and by the way it's magnifying it where the playhead is so I need to drag the playhead over here and then it'll magnify it and, and if you drag the other way it will magnify the opposite direction anti-magnify you can drag through the timeline like this now the keyboard shortcuts I prefer for this are the plus and minus keys on your keyboard so here's plus see he's just going larger minus and smaller don't use the calculator keyboard plus and minus for this but we need to get in here nice and close so that we can like I can decide do I want these these guys first and then cut to them or do I want this guy first and so maybe I want this guy first I'll drag this the clips over click to deselect the rest grab this happy guy here the music I can see the waveform the music's getting louder right here then we'll say these guys are next it's good and then um, what comes up next well the girls there the two clips of girls are two in a row so maybe let's have the girls go next and then this guy uh, these guys and then the girls so now if we just watch what we've got here from the beginning by the way hitting the home key will take you to, to, be, to the beginning of a sequence if you're in the timeline and a clip if you're in a source panel if you're on a laptop and don't have a home key use the function left arrow key okay now um did you notice that there was a little flash of black and editors would notice this experienced editors between this shot and that clip when it cuts there's a little boom I don't know if you can see it on this lesson that I'm recording for you but what we have to do there is we have to trim that out let's take a close look at these clips when you take the mouse and you hover near the cut this doesn't have to be selected when you, you can click and drag and that's cutting off a little bit of the footage at the beginning we're not losing any frames it's just cutting off frames um, you can think of this this editing program as a frame database because it's all stored back in the original footage but we can shorten these clips either at the end or at the beginning this is how you could arrange them to um, correspond to the beat if you're very careful also we can we can be careful to get rid of that black frame that might have been at the beginning of the clip when you have untrimmed clips then you're gonna see white triangles in the upper part of the clip in the beginning and in the end 
see the white triangles and um, trim clips show you that you're not at the beginning of the clips so if the if we trim all of these a little shorter by the way um, snapping gets in the way of trimming and what, what that function is is if you're trimming or if you're moving things it doesn't let you move something in between you could turn off the snap function this is something you usually have to do for trimming when you click on it it's it's blue when it's activated and it's white when it's not and then that will allow us to do more subtle trims without the snapping and you can even overwrite another portion of a clip that way one of the reasons snapping exists is to prevent you from overwriting frames you don't want to again none of these frames are being lost um, you can always undo anything you don't like under the edit menu up here undo so back to where we were let's have a look at this now home key by the way if you hit the end key it takes you to the end spacebar That's probably not on the beat because I wasn't trying hard to do that, but you could actually do that. Another thing about these clips is you could... It's not a technical problem if the clips are on... Tr if the video clips are on higher tracks, video tracks, that won't matter. Uh, but what it will show is that when the playhead plays through this, the clips that are above will obscure the clips that are below, so it'll look like it cuts from one clip to another. Also a danger is sometimes you could accidentally take this empty audio and that could be accidentally dragged on top of the music track and that will overwrite your music, blank it out so that you can't hear it during that segment. So watch out for that. You can always undo that. A few more techniques include you could select a clip and hit the delete key and if there's any particular clips you don't like, you can just get rid of them. Let's say that you've finished your music video, more or less, and it corresponds to what you like. If you have more source clips in the, in the tail end, you usually have to delete them because it will include those clips by default. So delete the things you don't want. And then there's my timeline with my music video. Let's, let's look at one more thing over here. I'm going to put the audio bin away and here's our graphics. Now these are three Photoshop files and they have what's called an alpha channel embedded into them such that if we take one and just drag it and put it on a track above any other clips we'll see the graphic and we'll see the video through the graphic. That's the property of an alpha channel and that's useful for combining images. More about alpha channels at another time. Also, some of these are not the right ones to use. This one, see it's too big. One of the graphics files are too big. There's ways to make them smaller, but again, that's for a more advanced lesson. So I want you to make a music video, put the graphic on it, so it'll, it'll have the Peak Productions logo, and when you're happy with it, here's how to export it out as a rendered self-contained file, which is what you need to complete the assignment. We need to make sure that our timeline is selected. I'm clicking on the timeline panel down here. It highlights blue. With the newest versions of Premiere, we click on this export button and it takes us to the export area and we want to give our file a name so I could change the name here if I wanted to let's call it hoverboard music video the location is this link which we would click on and then we could use the finder to select 
where I want my music video to go. I say save and then this indicates the location is going where I selected. The preset since the destination for this lesson is going to be Vimeo let's use a Vimeo preset which we can find down in the lower part of this list where it says more presets and you will discover when we scroll down this list you will find it's a long list but you will eventually find Vimeo presets and generally the smaller numbers will be smaller and the larger numbers will be larger files I'll select regular high definition 1080p for this say OK and then the format for our lesson let's choose H.264 it combines small file size with high quality while we're here let's have a look at the sidebar on the left where you see that media file is selected but notice that there's some shortcuts to exporting for YouTube and Vimeo as well we didn't use that sidebar because I wanted to show you the important choices of the name location preset and format with those choices made now we head towards the lower right of the interface this is where you can see information based on the choices you made we then say on the lower right export do not send it to the media encoder for this lesson the blue export button is the one we want to click and this will take a little bit of time it finishes the render and if I hide Premiere and I go look for my file here is the file this is my hoverboard music video mp4 you might want to play it and check it with a Mac I can hit the space bar and that will play the video and the sound and if you don't hear any sound uh, you got to figure out why I've got my computer sound down so I can talk to you I'm gonna just drag through this to check it but you watch and listen to the whole thing to make sure that it's good with older versions of Premiere you'd export under the file menu export media and we're gonna get this scary looking window and here's what you need to do for the assignment make sure you save this as an h.264 under format since this class is uploading to Vimeo you could go under preset and there's Vimeo presets down here that you could use generally the smaller the number you choose the smaller the file will be and if you're not uploading to Vimeo just choose another preset or take the default that's going to give us an output of a mp4 file dot mp4 if you want to change the name of the file you're outputting or save it to where you want to save it we click on this blue link under output next to output name this will give us our familiar finder window we can change the name to something like um, hoverboard music video and then we'll put this I'm gonna put it in my movies folder um, then I'm gonna say I'm gonna click on the Save button this has not rendered it yet it is only designated where the output is going and with what name make sure that your export video and audio boxes are checked they probably will be and then we can go down here and just say export don't say Q that will run Adobe Media Encoder we don't need that for this function I hit the export button and it will export just like the newer versions and place your movie where you designated to save it make sure that it looks and sounds right before you upload it and that is the lesson